Athletes Unlimited inspiring the next generation to walk proudly in the future. Sam Apuzo tightens the purse strings, then watch his best buddy Dempsey Arsenault do damage. Taylor Marino has been a super stopper, while Scotty Rose Growney has taken to scoring goals for starters. Let's shake it up with a happy hello to Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on ESPN. You're watching Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on ESPN. Today we visit with you from Sparks, Maryland, home of USA Lacrosse headquarters for a clash of captains as Team Sam Apuzo takes to the turf to battle the team led by Taylor Marino. A very pleasant welcome to you. Alongside Courtney Martinez, Connor, a five-time national champion at Maryland, I'm Joe Beninati. This contest features the top two players on the leaderboard, both coming off of a loss yesterday. So how do Sam and Taylor approach this game? You know, I think first and foremost, they have to get off to a quick start. The team that's winning is going to do the best, and that's how you move up the leaderboard. Obviously, Marino has not won as of late. Yesterday was Sam Apuzo's first loss. So they just need to make sure they're playing their best lacrosse as a team together. If you're new to Athletes Unlimited, we can help you with this overview of how things progress. 56 players in search of the individual championship, which will be crowned next weekend. Four teams get shuffled every Monday with a captain's draft, and we score the games with a very interesting leaderboard. There's three ways to earn points. You can do that statistically. You can do it by gaining MVP points that are announced at the end of each game after voting. And then your last way is quarter to quarter, end of game with an overall win. That's how you can get the most value with 45. When Sam Apuzo's team breaks the huddle today, they will be looking for more fireworks from Lauren Gilbert. This player has been explosive in this her rookie season. Lauren Gilbert, she's done an outstanding job on the field. We talk about her speed frequently. She's lightning fast. She's able to get separation. But as of late, she's being double teamed quickly. So her cutting game is really on par. She's had to evolve, and she has stepped up tremendously. As you look at her cutting in the middle of the field right now, she had to learn how to get some quick releases off as well to catch the goalies off guard. Lauren's been the league leader in goals. She scored big numbers in every game, and she's now number 13 on the leaderboard. Each week we see different players develop into genuine scoring threats in this league. Izzy McMahon may have started slowly, but she's been a major factor in the last few outings. Izzy McMahon, she has again stepped up her game on the field. I think she's been underestimated, undervalued. She has a quick change of direction, has a real knack for the goal, and she is a strong player. So when you give her space on the field, she has the range to take a powerful shot. Powerful, you use the word exactly right. Izzy is extremely powerful. Her long hours in the weight room definitely paying off. She's been hovering in the 40s on the leaderboard, sitting right now with 470 points. So today, we play game 17 of 24 this season. The officials are Lynn Bowers, Erica Leslie, Ronnie Anton, Patty Kletcher Porter, and Liz Brush. The Geico leaderboard, left side of your screen, will be popping it in throughout the day. Taylor Marino in goal for the number one spot. Sam Apuzo, number two. Amanda Johansson, third. Lizzie Colson, a first time captain this week, fourth. And Katie Glynn, her keeper, is right there with her. McMahon lets it fly and crossing over a smart looking stop right off the jump for Britt Reed. Every time the goalie makes a save, it's worth the six points on her leaderboard totals. Well, that's a positive for the goalkeeper. The attacker who had a shot being saved, it's negative two points. Again, everything having a value, so you want to make sure you're as consistent as possible on the field. On the move, McCone fires. That's fought off by Taylor Marino. No keeper in the league has more saves than Taylor. She's been double figures in seven straight. Gilbert gets underneath, bounce shot on the way, and Marino with another rejection in the game's first minute. Sun splash day here at USA Lacrosse headquarters, a 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, local time start for you. Glad you found us on ESPNU. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor, enjoying Team Apuzo in the orange, Team Marino in gold. Athletes Unlimited, the team rosters set at 14. On the field, 10 at 10, six on six at this end of the offensive work with Allie Kennedy, who's 
slowed her production down the last couple of games. She started this summer off a house of fire. Stevens, switch it. Geyer's back. Challenged on the outside there by Cookie Carr. She lets the bouncer go. That's off the side of the post, so it's a fresh 60-second shot clock, and the possession belongs to Team Apuzo in orange. Joe, as the season goes on, you look at the rosters, they have just 14 players per team. Midfielders are running. There's, again, just four on the field for any one team. And as legs become tired, you just see more production stem from those offensive players as, instead of from the midfielders. Sam Apuzo is the best offensive producer in two seasons of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Here she is, 14 in the orange, off the split dodge. Nice pass inside, Gilbert on the tuck away. Evolving your game is what needs to happen in Athletes Unlimited. All eyes are on Sam Apuzo. They know that she knows how to score. We see Emma Trenchard right there in the gold jersey taking off to send a quick double for Sam. But Lauren Gilbert, we talked about her cutting ability. Most of her goals early on in the season were all about one-on-one -on -one dodges. With quick doubles being sent to her, she has to realize when she's open, when there's a lane to cut, and that was one of those perfect examples, vision by Sam, finished by Lauren. You know, Lauren, your first season as a pro, it's supposed to be difficult. Ho-hum, 22 tallies, she's on top of the leaderboard. She scored in every game as a pro, all nine, in fact. Multi-goal games in six of her first eight. As we go inside the draw circle, Marie McCool setting up against Lindsay McComb. Draw control earns two points, and Gilbert will gobble those two up as well with her speed around the circle. In Athletes Unlimited, every play matters, every quarter matters. So the leading team at the end of this opening frame, everybody on the roster will bank 20 points as a result. Apuzo hanging out back behind the cage. Trenchard there to flush her out. A battle of uh, Team USA gold medalists there, Apuzo and Trenchard. McCone on the flip. Dempsey Arsenault will sweep. Gilbert is outside the eight meter key. Score from beyond that arc. You'll get two points for your team, 16 for yourself. Nice strip and takeaway in transition. Molly Little with a cause turnover. That's as good as scoring a goal in Athletes Unlimited. 12 more points for Molly. We've seen Molly Little cause a lot of turnovers. She's active on the hands. She has anticipation defensively, but most importantly, she's tough and physical, and that's what you need out of your defensive players if they're gonna move up the leaderboard. You have to have the ability to make a play on the ball. Carr challenging Growney. McCool works in. Arsenal forces her to the elbow. Geyer's back once or left. McCool is inverted, midfielder below the goal line. Arsenal right there with her. Shot clock's at 15. McMahon outside the eight meter key, rolling to her left as he fires, scores! McMahon's hot hand continues. Izzy McMahon, we've seen her utilizing that sweep, her movement to the left side. She's a natural righty, but she can play both ways just as every player in this league. We see as soon as she catches it, that nice quick rollback that she has, change of directions, or how she's able to get her hands free. That's how she gets a step on that defensive player right there. Excellent quick change. Izzy was here early. She was at the park. She was at USA Lacrosse headquarters. She was going through some calisthenics, some things to fire herself up, get her body right. And as a result, it's been treating herself pretty well. Those fast feet leading to nine goals now in the last five games for Izzy. Behind the goggles and eager to get back out there again in what is a 1-1 one, one draw. Courtney, how early were you on the field when you were playing collegiately at Maryland? Were you someone who was out there terribly early or were you last second? I took a lot of bathroom breaks. You did? <laughs> well, <laughs> I at least she's I honest. I need another drink. You know, I, I was, yeah, not, not like an Izzy. And you appreciate those kind of players, tireless workers, needing to do what it takes to get her feet ready. And obviously it works. You know, she has elevated her game and it showed. Sounds like my routine to get in the booth. Where is he? He's in the bathroom again. Where is he? He's back in the bathroom again. 1-1 one, one score. A little too much information. Halfway through the opening quarter. 
On the move here from the angle was Kennedy, fought off by Britt Reed. Closest to the ball and a shot when it leaves the field, where and when it leaves, gets possession. The inside roll there for Stevens. Kick it out to McMahon, bluffing the two. Just jumping on board with us, Gilbert for Apuzo's squad. McMahon for Marino's. Stevens with a shovel, she scores! Molly Stevens. Alyssa Perella, she was the one looking inside. She's a top dodger, and she has been stopped throughout Athletes Unlimited here in season two. As we look at this tough defense, Ella Simpkins, and then the double came from Cookie Carr right there, number 83 in orange. Molly Little, her handle inside, second to none. She was able to handle one, two sliding defenders, that nice little backhand could potentially be an SC top 10. A nominee blindfolded <laughs> for Molly Stevens, her fifth of the season. Molly has goals in five of the nine outings. She told us she'd love to be playing tennis if it were not for lacrosse. Team Marino has jumped to the 2-1 advantage. Those 20 points for winning the quarter are on the line as we are halfway home in the opening frame. McCone gets the draw control. Give her two more points. Lindsay's been doing a lot of uh, draw work in this week three of four. We play 24 total games this season. We run for four weekends. Things will conclude on the 14th of August. Off the split dodge, it's Dempsey Arsenal. Six on six with her captain, Sam Apuzo. Around the horn for Vanthoff. Vanthoff has a lethal shot when you give her room to take it. On the go, Apuzo pumped it wide. In line, Alex Ost Holman gets possession. Today we have a theme with our athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. These athletes with great power in their voices. We'll learn more about that theme in just a few moments. As Izzy McMahon has staked her team to a 2-1 advantage. Coming up, power in my voice. always thought that self-love equaled selfishness and that really freaked me out because I would never want to seem selfish. When I got up on that TED Talk stage all I was thinking about was how can I burst this little ball of energy boom and explode it out to these people in this room and make them feel that love that I feel in my heart when I'm surrounded by fantastic people that are pumping me up. When I've had coaches in the past that are like, Mira, you can do it. Mira, you can make this safe. When I've had teachers in the past that are like, Mira, you, you got a B minus, we need to work towards an A. When I've had my parents that were like, you know, that really hurt you, you need to bounce back and you've got this because you're strong. And I wanted to emulate that moment for other people in that room and just still in disbelief that it happened. Mira and many other athletes, Unlimited athletes, have said there's power in every person's voice, whether it's uh, speaking up for a cause or voting or standing up for their mates and peers, helping in the community. Everybody can have an impact through their actions. To learn more about the initiative, Power In My Voice, go to AUProSports.com. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor in the booth. Mira Shane is joining us for a chair chat. Mira. Nice to see you. How does Athletes Unlimited really embrace your willingness to take a stance and be a civic leader? Give us the ability to be able to use our voices for the better and for the good. Um, it, it's whether it's through our intersectional equity working group, which meets on a monthly basis, or just by purely being able to support a nonprofit or a cause that we care about. That's the way that we use power within our voices, and AU supports that through and through, and so it's just really special be, to be able to play for that today out here on this field. Mira, we hear people speak about living their authentic life. What does that mean to you? 
I think it means so many things. I think we're all on this journey of, of living our most authentic life. But in a way, for me, it means using my voice to help those that are misrepresented, people that look like me, that are biracial and queer, um, that haven't always had the chance to have their voice be heard. And so I'm just really, really grateful to be able to lift up other people around me and also to have other people that inspire me and that mentor me throughout my life to be able to make some change in this world and change it for the better. Mira, let's expand on that. You have a very powerful, personable speaking voice. We love talking with you. What's the best way for you to maximize that voice among your peers and, and fellow athletes? Well, first of all, I love chatting with you all. It's always a good time. It's always a party when I when I get in this chair. But um, I think ways that you can really amplify your own voice and make it even more powerful and even more broadcasted and loud is, is through voting. Get out and vote. Use your voice. Um, you know, this fall, a lot of things are on the ballot that might be really important to you. Have your voice be heard. I think also just having conversations with folks that might have a difference in opinion. Have those conversations. Reach out to somebody that might not know your perspective. I have a lot of great conversations with folks that might not understand the biracial perspective or the, the queer perspective. And so having those conversations is step one to really leading with love and to be able to um, lead with a life of authenticity. Mira, last one. Thank you so much. You're always so great to talk with. But if you look at the opportunities that you have in the future, I'm curious, what's what's the journey look like for you as you look into ahead? Oh man, uh, that's that's a, a deep one, Court. I think <laughs> I think right now I'm really focused on my career within diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, I want to be able to build that within companies and in the workforce in New York City where I live. I want to be able to bring that to teams to be able to cultivate a better culture. And I also want to see that for our lacrosse community. Here I lead our in the crease conversations on a weekly basis, and I believe having those conversations of DEI in the workplace and within teams is really how we get better as individuals. So I'm really excited to just keep growing my career there and as well as um, musically and creatively with my beatboxing. On the side. Mira, while you've been chatting, we've been seeing some awfully good goalkeeping. We look forward to you getting in there. Let's do it. I can't wait. See y'all. Thanks very much. It's 3-1. Most recently on the board, Team Marino. Now with three unanswered markers towards the tail end of this opening quarter with 20 points on the line. As we look at Geyer's back right here, she's a natural lefty. That is her bread and butter coming around the left side of the goal cage, that low left area. She really just powered through the defense. Wasn't a lot of shake and bake moves. She got a half step and she just used her muscle to out muscle that defense on the last one with a strong bull dodge from behind at X, extending Team Marino's lead at this point, three to one. Geyer's back, who had three goals and an assist against Team Colson yesterday in a losing effort, has staked Team Marino to the 3-1 advantage now. 20 points on the line for the squad that wins the quarter. 45 points overall when you win the game for everybody on the roster. Remember, the leaderboard, it's a cumulative total. We have worked through now three weekends of play. We have the top two players on the leaderboard clashing in this contest. Team Apuzo and uh, Team Marino, Sam and Taylor setting the pace. Izzy McMahon jogging off the sideline, tail end of the opening frame. Just had a lengthy chat with Mira Shane. And Mira did such a nice job with uh, her TED Talk, technology, entertainment, and design. Could you imagine being in the crowd listening to her? She's just an enthralling voice, and she has a, a way of connecting with people. And that's one of the reasons why she's the co-chair of the Player Executive Committee in Athletes Unlimited, the players make all the decisions in this league. Now, anytime we have an opportunity to chat with Mira, you know, you can just feel her passion, and I think that's one of the most exciting parts about her. She definitely has a bright future ahead of her, not just in lacrosse. Oh, Arsenal whistling that one wide of the goal. Backed up on the end line, Grace Griffin is there. Courtney, I'm judging that uh, by your mannerisms here in the booth, we have an unwanted visitor of the Bumblebee variety. Snapshot score! Shayna Pereka. Pereka dodging to the goal like uh, Martinez Connors dodging the bee in the booth. You are not kidding. Slightly bigger wasp than I could have ridden. But Sam Apuzo, as we watch right here, quarterback offensively, always. She gets her team going, whether it's from the draw circle or right now from behind the cage. 
Her IQ second to none. She just sees the field differently. I love her celebrations afterwards. She really gets her team momentum going. And she's that spark that they need right now as they've closed the gap to just one. Shane is up to a half a dozen this week three. As we remind you, every assist during this year's Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse season, Aspiration will be planting 10 trees. Heading into today, well over 1,200 have been committed to this season. We thank Aspiration for all of its support. Making it now a one-point game with 71 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Those 20 win points on the line for the team that wins this individual quarter. Off the draw, Ella Simpkins is hovering for a ground ball. She's flattened by McCool. The officials awarding possession to Team Apuzo in orange. Lauren Gilbert will accelerate into this six on six, picked up by McCool. Gilbert yielding to Apuzo, who's been in a feeding mood in the first frame today. Griffin building up momentum. Watched carefully on the outside by Little. Change of pace inside. Wraps this one off the crossbar and out. She had Marino beaten, that hit the iron. Shot clock is turned off. Final possession for Apuzo as they try to tie the quarter up. If we're tied at the end of 10 minutes, those 20 win points would carry over, make the second worth 40. Marino with another great stop on Shayna Pareka. Arsenal gets him a third whack at the offensive end. Three for a dollar here for Team Apuzo. Arsenault on the go, time's a waste and off the flip. Nice defensive read there by Trenchard, she steals it. Four seconds to play in the quarter. Trenchard feeds it ahead and time will elapse in the opening 10 minutes. That means 20 points for everybody dressed in the gold uniforms, a 3-2 victor in the opening quarter. Another hot one in the DMV. We are in Sparks, Maryland, about 20 miles north of Baltimore. The action's heating up too, plenty of offense. Team Marino on top after 10 minutes on ESPN. Another great day of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. We had a good one yesterday too. All smiles there, Alex Ost Holman and her gang with uh, Team Sam Apuzo as they were in a battle with Team Joe Hansen. Came up short 9-8 yesterday morning. We uh, were cloud cover for most of the morning. The sun would break through afterwards and Izzy McMahon's goal scoring has erupted as well as these two teams battled in one of the final games of the weekend. We're done with 10 minutes. We play four 10 minute quarters of stop time in Athletes Unlimited. 3-2 for Team Marino. The lead goal provided by Sam Geyer's back and as a result, everybody on Team Marino, all 14 players get 20 points on the leaderboard. Folks, next week we have Premier Lacrosse League action. PLL play goes to Utah. Great state with Atlas and the Whip Snakes meeting Friday, eight Eastern, five Pacific followed by Water Dogs and Redwoods. Chaos and Archers return the page to Saturday, three Eastern, noon Pacific. And the Cannons will match up with the Chrome, all four of those games exclusively on ESPN+. I see that name, Cannons, and I think of Nick Morocco in goal for head coach Sean Quirk, another head coach who's been so cooperative to us in the past. And speaking of the men's game, I know we had uh, Izzy McMahon out on the field earlier, but. Way earlier than that, about two hours before faceoff, the under-21 Team USA squad was limbering up, getting ready for their journey. Today, in fact, they're traveling to Limerick, Ireland. The tournament begins on Wednesday for them against Canada. I saw Brandon Grimes at Johns Hopkins, uh, Patrick Cavanaugh of Notre Dame, Brennan O'Neill from Duke, Alex Slusher from Princeton, all those guys, headliners. They'll be under the direction of Nick Myers, who is the head coach of the men's squad at Ohio State, wishing them all the very best. As we get back underway, second quarter now, Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, the Geico leaderboard, left side of the screen, find your favorite player. We have 56 of them in residence. They're all battling to be one champion. We'll crown the individual champ a week from today. Hand out four medals. Everybody's name into the Book of Unlimited. Season two for lacrosse, season three for softball continues. At the same time, this weekend in Rosemont, Illinois, 
Wishing all of our friends the very best there. If you're tuning in a little late today, 3-2 after 10 minutes, Team Apuzo and Orange. Gilbert on the flip for Arsenal. Shot clock now at 20. Lindsey McCone wandering in outside the eight meter key. This is Griffin, little shake and bake. Not freeing her up for Molly Little. Inside, that was a tough catch there for Arsenal. Streaking back, looking for the ground ball. Kira Pelton comes up with it. Kira began the weekend at the top of the list when it came to leader points. Snapshot score! Geyer's back is feeling it. She has her second on the day. Sam Geyer's back. She has the ability to get to the goal and get there quickly. This was a fast break transition from the defensive end. We see Kira Pelton picking up that ground ball. That was a missed feed inside. And then Ali Kennedy maneuvering that ball into the ever capable hands of Sam Geyer's back. She was the MVP of the NCAA tournament, scored, scored a whole lot of goals in that championship game. Finisher, she is Sam Geyer's back at this point, extending the lead to two. She had five in the NCAA semis. She had three in the NCAA title win, and Mira Shane is definitely appreciative of Geyer's back's work, the daughter of Mike and Isabel. Isabel was born and raised, Courtney, in Argentina. And Sam was talking to us on media day. Can't believe how fast a month goes by, but a month ago, Sam was saying, you know, if I thought about it, I should have played for Team Argentina in the World Games. They were coached by Holly Riley, who played in Athletes Unlimited, played defense last summer. That's what was so great about World Championships. You saw players whose parents, born in other countries, who had the opportunity to play, not just for Team USA, but those from England, as we see. Britt Reed had the opportunity to win a bronze medal for Team England. Her late father grew up in England. 4-2 for Team Marino. Geyer's back the lone goal in the second quarter, almost two minutes in to this frame. Gilbert off the split dodge from left to right. Bring it for Van Thoff, a long way from the cage. Little toe drag action for Apuzo. Back to Van Thoff. Doesn't need a lot of room. McCool, though, was right there on her hands. Six seconds to shoot. Late in the shot clock, Gilbert outside of Puzo for two. An easy answer there for Taylor Marino. Just as the shot clock was uh, expiring, Marino adds to her save totals. She has six already. It is crazy how fast the volume of saves adds up for Taylor Marino. We've got an offside here. I think this is going to be a green card, 30-second player up. Joe, you had just mentioned six saves already for Taylor Marino. We're not even finished the first half. She had 91 coming into this game. So my math, I, I know I normally need a calculator, <laughs> but that's 97 saves already. Last year, Kaylee Waters had 92. Britt Reed had 100. And that was an overall of 15 games. This season, they're going to be playing just 12 and she has the entire rest of this game as well as two more next weekend. So if she continues to play as well as she has been, I have no doubt that she will surpass that. Three more next weekend. She'll shatter the record. That's gonna, she may even double it. Banthoff for Gilbert, off the crossbar. When Marino doesn't make the saves, her best friends are there, crossbars and posts to back her up. Sneak attack, Griffin bounces it and scores! Grace Griffin. Grace Griffin, when a lot of people think of her, they look at her speed in the middle of the field. They look at her defensive work. She oftentimes had matchups for the top players on the opponents. But that check right there, the check from the defensive player, Ali Palermo, is what caused this ball to roll in. So a little bit of a change up for Marino in goal. Unfortunate, that's one of those goals that you just have to let go, forget, have a short attention span for, but nevertheless, it adds another one in Team Apuzo's hip pocket. Grace, as a result, with a big smile on her face, they don't ask how, they just ask how many. As uh, Griffin converts, making this a 4-3 game. Lynn Bowers is in charge of our officials today. She presides over challenges or officials reviews. 
the challenges are often put into place by the facilitators. Team Apuzo's facilitator is Nicole Flores. Team Mor Moreno is uh, Renee Olson. So as we watch this over again, you can see one of the toes of Grace Griffin after this left foot step. It's that right one right there. It stepped on the line. So that would be a goal circle violation. Courtney, is the ball out? If the ball's out right now, her feet are fine. That one should count. Definitely she toes that goal circle, but the ball's long gone by then. Lynn Bowers with the official word. Yellow had challenged, uh, had used one of their challenges for us to check to see if in fact Orange had her foot in the crease, and in fact she did. So therefore there is no goal, and um, so no points are scored. Okay, Lynn doesn't agree with me. Take it down, make it to a 4-2 game. Six minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the quarter. So Grace Griffin, the ball's away, then she touches the crease. But Joe, unless she's pushed into the crease, she cannot follow through into the crease with her body after the fact. Oftentimes when you see a goal being scored and it's still allowed, it's because they call a push on the foul as well, that that wasn't just the player's momentum, but the defender forced her in. So the player traveling into the crease is all that matters. It doesn't matter when the ball is out of her cross. And if that's what Lynn Bowers has ruled, then she's exactly right. And it comes down as a no goal for Grace Griffin and still a two point advantage. Just about four minutes into the second quarter. Watson on the go. Sydney Watson, 27 in the goal, who erupted for four against Team Johansson back on Friday morning. Game that was not televised. McCool, split dodge, great moves inside. Better save by Britt Reed. Reed there at the end of the line with her fifth stop. The goalie play has been very sharp in this opening game today. Team Apuzo against Team Marino. Team Johansson and Team Colson will conclude matters. The game scheduled to start at one o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. Four minutes old now in the second. Gilbert streaking to the cage against Palermo. Her Northwestern teammate, how many times would those two have run into each other in practice in college? Allie wins that battle. Marino's pass is a beauty. 40 yards right on the button to Kira Pelton. Geyer's back drifting below the goal line. There's Scotty Rose Growney. When she heats up, she does so in a hurry. When she gets multiple goals going, she's likely to bid for the hat trick. McMahon for two, trying to catch Reed napping. She sent it wide. Geyer's back will bring it off the end line. 25 seconds to shoot. Against Caroline Wakefield, ever steady defender in Athletes Unlimited. Banthoff with a good cause turnover there and the ground ball for Wakefield. Cause turnover gets you 12 points on the leaderboard. Scoop, ground ball two there for Gilbert. Arsenault on the head player looking for Alex Ost Holman just out of her cross. And Marino will gallop with it. Lobbing it on, one handed stab by Little who's hoping for a fast break, but Team Apuzo defenders quickly get back in the hole. Looking to slow things down, Team Marino. That was a lot of back and forth play. I like each of the teams looking to take risks. Lacrosse is all about speed, but at some point you gotta give your teammates a rest on the field, especially those midfielders who are doing most of the heavy lifting. High volume of shots as you could tell at the bottom of the screen so far in this opening half. Watson keeps the ball moving. Geyer's back, cradles in against Wakefield. Less than 20 to shoot. There's a 60 second shot clock in Athletes Unlimited. Ball down and McCone has the takeaway. Wakefield to clear. 20 points available for the team that wins the second quarter outright. And for the moment, that's Team Marino leading 1-0. Apuzo against Trenchard. Another all-world matchup there. Emma Trenchard, the reigning National Defender of the Year off the National Champion North Carolina Tar Heel squad. 
Banthoff stubbed a toe, then gets right back into her dodge, but her pass is too tall, and Palermo makes the swipe. Ali Palermo is everywhere on defense, so quick. She anticipates Courtney so well, 24 in the goal. This pass over top of McMahon sends us to a TV timeout. Another blistering hot day in Sparks, Maryland. Team Marino on the advantage by two. More in quarter two to come. Dividing the score up into quarters for you. Team Marino taking the opening quarter. 20 points for everybody on their roster in gold. They have the lead in the second as well. A 1-0 advantage, 4-2 overall for Taylor Marino's side. Sunday Night Baseball coming up tonight. An NL West rivalry game. Juan Soto and the Padres. Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers wrapping up a big three-game set at Dodger Stadium. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio with coverage beginning at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN2. That's where you'll find baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Team Apuzo relying upon the scoring strength of rookie Lauren Gilbert, who hails from a very athletic family. Gilbert slashing inside, still with it. Snaps and scores! A remarkable goal from Gilbert. My dad played football at Dartmouth. He was a wide receiver there. My mom played field hockey there. And then my sister plays lacrosse at Stanford. She's a midfielder. Gilbert going to goal. Free position, she scores! She is the fastest player on the field. I think we're all like good at different things, but I'd say I'm the fastest. <laughs> The daughter of Christina and Jerry. I'm glad that Lauren referenced her sister, Katie, who plays with the Cardinal of Stanford. Lauren has done dynamite work, Courtney, up to 22 goals. She leads the league. Why don't you break down her handiwork so far today? Lauren is amazing at getting separation on the field, but she's had to evolve as Athletes Unlimited went on. Her IQ, she has to be aware of her surroundings. Now, when she, that she's on Sam Apuzo's team, they're all looking at Sam Apuzo, so that's opening her up to cut to goal, as opposed to dodging, which is what we're traditionally used to see her doing, slicing and dicing through defenses. She now has to be more in a cutting mode, which she's already had a goal today. Setting the pace in terms of goals this season, Lauren Gilbert still two better than Charlotte North. We'll see the great 88 in our second game today. We were itemizing the people in Lauren Gilbert's family. Can't forget the dog, right? That's the Labradoodle named Rudy. Off a turnover here. Marino in gold. Lost it again. Allie Kennedy didn't come up with it. And Lindsey McCone and Tima Puzo in the orange. Flexing back with Grace Griffin, who had an earlier second quarter tally taken down. So as you can see, the score in this quarter alone is one nothing for Team Marino. 20 points available over the final 250 of this opening half. With there being just one goal being scored, it's still up for grabs. That can easily be equalized, tie things up, forcing those points to have to carry over potentially to that third quarter. McCone driving to the cage. McCone gets underneath there on Palermo, who bumped her below goal line extended. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 225 in the half. Stay with us. A special feature, a best of will take you into the game with Air National Guard. So many of the players willing to wear mics for us and share their chatter. That's coming up between quarters two and three. Apuzo moves it. Arsenal scores! Peanut butter and jelly. Apuzo and Arsenal. Those two work so well offensively together. We saw it for a long time at Boston College and then again with Team USA this summer at World Championships. So right there we saw Dempsey Arsenal give the ball up to Sam Apuzo. And then as you look at the shot clock, time is winding down. They knew time was not on their side. They had to make action happen quickly. So who better than Arsenal and Apuzo, best friends working together, nice give and go action on that elbow. Those two players who love to play tennis as well as lacrosse together. Dempsey is into double figures now. 12 points when you score a goal in this league. Four when you get an assist. And Apuzo has three helpers already today. Remember, there was a game in the World Championship. She had six assists 
in one outing alone for Team USA against Team Scotland. 4-3 right now, less than two minutes to go in the quarter. 20 points are on the line. And right now, the quarter points are split. It's 1-1, Marino and Apuzo. As you see, see things shape up for Alex Ost Holman. Peeking over the top. Apuzo launching into a dodge. Playing a two-person game there with Gilbert. Split dodge, Apuzo fires and scores! 14 says, follow me. I like how Sam is changing her location of where she's initiating from. When you look at Sam Apuzo dodging from the top, oftentimes we see her directing from behind the goal cage, just as she did on their last goal. But right here, that quick split dodge, that change of direction. And she has a quick first step. Joe, we had talked about that. You didn't realize how fast Sam was. When she gets going, she rides hard. She has quick speed. But that quick change of direction coupled with the explosive speed is what makes her hard to defend. I really appreciated it when we were watching from the sideline. We had a couple of games that we couldn't televise uh, due to severe weather. And then all of a sudden, when you're on the sideline, you realize that she has a great burst. She's taller than I think, which gives her leverage on her defender. And Gosh, just an outstanding offensive mind for the game. Two tallies, 37 seconds apart. It's now a 4-4 game. Apuzo grabs the lead in this quarter in the quest for those 20 points with 80 seconds remaining in the frame and Gilbert off and running. Lauren Gilbert chased by Emma Trencher. Joe, as you had mentioned, since quarter points are on the line, Team Apuzo is up two to one in the second quarter. Despite the fact that the score is tied overall 4-4, if the defense can come up with a stop for Team Marino, they will have time on the clock to get a possible another opportunity to get the points for themselves in quarter two. There's about a 14 second differential between the shot clock now at 22 and the game clock. Working it up top, Arsenal. 15 seconds to shoot. Stalked there by McCool. Wide open was Ost Holman. A brilliant save for Marino. Taylor Marino doing it again in the goal circle. She has seven stops. Little's off and running. Looking for the four on three fast break. Stevens on the trailer break. It's Kennedy. Denied by Reed. Britt Reed launching this one to midfield. Simpkins checking the board. 15 seconds to operate. Ella Simpkins going to goal, kick it to Apuzo. Down to 10 seconds. Apuzo's sneak attack flushed out by Trencher. Sam Apuzo waiting, four seconds to go. The pass to the inside gets away from Ost Holman and that's where the opening half will come to its end. But the late Sam Apuzo goal wins the quarter for everybody in orange, 20 more points for their leaderboard tally. We are done with 20 minutes. Two quarters are in the books. Mira Shane, as always, fired up for her mates. Stay right there. Between quarters two and three, we'll take you into the game. A best of sequence of all the players wearing the microphones for us in week three. For all after 20. Lacrosse is the oldest team sport in North America, and you can document it back to the early 17th century. We're at the USA Lacrosse headquarters. It's the home of the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Stars and Stripes colors, Hall of Fame inductees, all the tradition and pageantry of this wonderful sport, the Creators Game. This has been the Hall of Fame venue since 2016. We invite you to come on out and check it out. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse season two, done with two quarters today between Team Apuzo and Team Moreno. It's a 4-4 draw. Moreno's side won the uh, initial 20 points in the opening quarter. Team Apuzo winning the second frame, two to one. Folks, the, the players have been very accommodating wearing microphones for us this summer. Here is a listen to the best of their into the game segments presented by Air National Guard. Sorry. <laughs> you tricked me out. That was beautiful. You. Oh, how are you? 
This is my left hand. <laughs> you guys, I think we just need to continue being aggressive, all right? Like, I know we're up, but like, keep pushing. Watch this pick, watch this pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So I think, so that one they picked, I stepped down and I was gonna I step up. To so do we think in that one I say you I'll hold and then I'll say under on the off ball? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here. Court, court, come, court, come now. Court, go, court, go, court, go, court, go. Yes, court, 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 turn. Yes, Courtney. We were already eating our breakfast burritos by this time. <laughs> it was unreal. The quickest quarter ever. That was so quick. Oh my God. They got two shots on cage. They did. I know. Yeah. It's amazing. It is. Charlotte. Charlotte. You know what I'm feeling? No, no, go back to You know what I'm feeling for lunch later? A sandwich. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did golf yesterday. Uh, uh, KO got a birdie. KO got a birdie on the 18th hole. Yeah, yeah. KO! Let's go, brother! Totally. It was all about yesterday's golf game. Let's go, KO! Brother connection today, man. I know, I'm gonna jump so high right now. <laughs> we tried it. <laughs> Wait, we get one second. You don't want to run me, Nicole. I don't want to run period, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole, get out of my face, boss. You don't want to look at how pretty I am? <laughs> stick side low, Taylor. It's coming. Stick side low. I knew you wouldn't. That's why I was yelling it. I was trying to get in her head. You think it worked? Hearing Nicole Levy talk about her golf game, could you imagine the mind game she plays out there on the links? 4-4, Apuzo and Marino at the half. Sam Apuzo doing her thing, beating Taylor Marino there in the Clash of Captains. Highlights coming your way after this TV timeout. Britt Reed getting ready for quarter number three. She guards the goal for Team Apuzo in a 4-4 draw against uh, Taylor Marino's side. The two teams have split the 20 points available for wins over the quarters, uh, splitting the first uh, 10 minutes and second 10 minutes. Folks, if you're curious on how we put these teams together, tune in every Monday. That's tomorrow, 7 Eastern on YouTube. Live Athletes Unlimited Weekly Draft. It's hosted by John Brickley. Find out who gets taken number one, where all your favorite players will land, what color jerseys they'll be wearing. For more info on the Athletes Unlimited Draft, go to auprosports.com. In this game right now, we have the top two players on the leaderboard, the Geico leaderboard, likely to factor in perhaps again. Remember, uh, Sam Apuzo has already been a three-time captain. If the draft were to start right now, Marino, Apuzo, Johansson, and Colson would remain in the captain's chairs, but we will have to wait for the remainder of play in this game, the doubleheader, and the MVP voting before we get our four for the chairs tomorrow. Joe Beninati and Courtney Martinez, Connor with you. And staying along those lines, let's continue to speak about Apuzo and Marino specifically. The captains are living up to their end of the bargain. They are. Taylor Marino, she has had a lot of saves already in this first half, nearing that double-digit mark where has, she has been so significant and consistent throughout her games, especially as of late. And then Sam Apuzo, she's had a hand in every single goal. One goal, three assists. You can't ask for much more than that in order to stay at the top of the leaderboard. The next part is winning quarters and then maybe getting those MVP points. During the break, you and the guys and gals in the truck have been working on a bunch of packages to break down goals. Lauren Gilbert is usually at the top of the list. All eyes are on her, but when Sam Apuzo has the ball in her stick, Lauren Gilbert is aware as well. So you see that she has recognized her defender is left, and then she immediately cuts for the ball. Sam Apuzo is so calm when the ball is in her stick. She's able to find those cutters. And then Izzy McMahon, that's where she started to take over. She sees that there's defenders in front of her. She dodges to her right. That quick rollback change of direction after they've separated is what's opened up the lane for her. So defenders were there. All of a sudden, they're not opposite direction. Sam Apuzo yet again, her eyes are up. She's being the quarterback. She sees what's happening in front of her, where the defenders are at. 
And then Shayna Pareka recognizes that lane that's in front of her. Defense separates, she steps into it. Again, natural lefty, so they're all different looks and hard to defend when teams are changing it up offensively. Running out of the defensive end of the field, fast break, defense translates into offense. Allie Kennedy moving the ball. Two defenders were in front of her. She sees a wide open Sam Geyers back down low. Natural lefty who's able to finish that fast break goal. And then we have the ball getting into Dempsey Arsenal stick. A nice little give and go, very underutilized, but so very effective offensively. Give and go action with her collegiate as well as her U.S. teammate Sam Apuzo. And this is how the second quarter has ended. The game is tied up at 4-4, Joe. We should name that segment the Courtney Martinez-Connor Chronicles. What do you need me for? We're going to the third in a 4-4 game. Enjoying a good low scoring game today. Team Apuzo against Team Marino. Game 17 of 24 this summer. These two squads splitting the quarter win points. Folks, today we're celebrating Power In My Voice, the initiative part of uh, Athletes Unlimited's mission to empower the development of athletes civ as civic leaders, both uh, on and off the field, elevating them as role models for the next generation of athletes and fans. So if you want to learn more about this initiative, and we invite you to do so, Power In My Voice. Go to AUProSports.com. Second half begins, Sam Apuzo's squad is in orange. In Athletes Unlimited, there is a 60 second shot clock. There are 20 points available for the team that wins the quarter individually. The Geico leaderboard is on the left side of your screen right now. Taylor Marino has vaulted back into that top rung today with all of her save totals. She and Britt Reed both outstanding in the opening 20 minutes. Lauren Gilbert leads the league in goals. When you score a goal, you get 12 points on your leaderboard tally. Sam Apuzo here has three assists already. For every helper, you get four. Aust Holman, great pass inside. Better save there, Marino. She robbed Grace Griffin at the doorstep. It is hard to put into words, Courtney, just how good Taylor Marino has been. Now, remember, Marino was the third string netminder on the Team USA gold medalists behind Liz Hogan and Kaylee Waters. Waters is another athlete who plays in Athletes Unlimited. Marino has been the banner keeper uh, in these three weeks by far. That just shows the depth that Team USA has. If Marino was goalie number three for them, you know, I do think that Team USA probably could have taken any mix of players. There's so many dominant US team players at every single position but she has done an outstanding job so far. As we discussed, her goals against average, her save, she leads all of it. McCone, four on three. McCone, skip it inside, Aust Holman. And again, Marino was there, making the save and then telling the officials that Alex was right in her crease. The ball belongs to Team Marino in the gold jerseys. As we watch this replay in the upper right-hand side, Alex Aust Holman, right on the doorstep and I think this is where Taylor Marino shines. She has the ability to stand tall and stuff so many players when they are in tight in that 1v9. It's just them and the goalkeeper. She holds her ground, matches stick to stick. Difficult to do but always coming up with those in tight saves. Timing is so good. McMahon fires. This is a laser beam off the outside of the goal. Britt Reed. Matching uh, Taylor Marino save for save as Reed will walk it up. Reed, one of the players who's over 2,000 points in her career on the Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse leaderboard. Arsenal cruising in, finds Apuzo, and they'll work six on six at this end. Dempsey Arsenal will be moving from Boston to San Diego in the fall. Rolling back, picks up Aust Holman. Alex. Choosing a Puzo outside the eight meter key. If you score from there, two points for the team, 16 for yourself. Gilbert forced back by her. Northwestern Wildcat teammate, Ali Palermo there on D. McCone is another Northwestern alum. She was ripped off and this turns out to be fast break time for Marie McCool. Gliding in, chased by a Puzo, fires and scores! McCool, coast to coast. 
Paris McCool legging it out, showing her speed in the open field. For a second, you thought that she was going to pass the ball, but she had the time, room, space, and the wherewithal. Excellent cause turnover from the defensive end by Team Marino. And as she's sprinting out, she sees nobody's coming up and stepping up into her lane. If you give Marie McCool space, she will take it. She does have the ability to shoot long range shots as well, but she was able to carry that into the eight meter key. Again, nobody even getting a stick on her. Transition game in Athletes Unlimited so very fast. And as you can see, contact, it's physical, but Marie McCool with her 10th goal on the season. She's been a little quiet offensively from what we've seen in the past, but she has the ability to take over in instances like that. Tiva Puzo has won the last six draws and that string comes to an end as Allie Kennedy pops up with draw control, feeding on the outside for Molly Stevens. You mentioned McCool, her numbers have cooled offensively, but she still does it in so many other ways. Draw controls, ground balls, she find her all over a score sheet. And that's the way to add up points in Athletes Unlimited. Every moment counts. Scotty Rose grounding with a drive. That's answered waist high by Britt Reed. Floats it on to Taylor Vanthoff. Vanthoff didn't make a clean catch. She will, however, come up with the ground ball at the midline, but she's over and back. Over and back is called against Team Apuzo. Give the ball to Team Marino in goal. Stevens gliding in against Ella Simpkins. They are 26 in the orange. She fancies a golf career, if not to, for playing lacrosse. Izzy McMahon, who's been spending some time in the weight room in residence here in Sparks, Maryland, about 20 minutes north of Baltimore. Izzy loves time in the gym. Very powerful, very strong. Ditto for Ali Kennedy, working with McMahon. Thinking about the two, she scores! A rocket from McMahon. Izzy McMahon once again showing that she has the ability. Joe, I think she heard about that weightlifting comment a little bit. She has been working hard in the offseason, but one thing that she wanted to change this year was making sure that she still had her lifts in season. Not too much, but just enough to maintain. And we see as that feed was getting into her stick, she already was looking to open up her hips to the goal so we, she can really wind up. Right there, it seems like her toes are off the line. Izzy knew it immediately. Once she planted, fired, she pointed and said, look, there's daylight between my toe and the line. And that should be a two-point tally. It is being reviewed at the timekeeper. There's the point. She says, that's two. As uh, Izzy McMahon has already scored two-point goals twice this summer. Lynn Bowers presiding over this official's review. Bowers, Erica Leslie, Ronnie Anton, Patty Kletcher Porter, and Liz Brush teaming up as the officials today. McMahon drilling that from the eight meter key. Was that left toe off the line? And, and there's no question, just like you said, daylight. It absolutely looks like it. From that angle, you can see a little bit beyond her cleat. She's probably happy that she maybe got those size eights as opposed to the eight and a halves. Izzy McMahon, her first career two-pointers have all come in the last three games. And you can see her reaction. We're gonna make it official. Lynn Bauer says there's no need to. And Izzy and friends now have three points in the third quarter. The chase for those 20 quarter points. McMahon's into double figures with goals. McCool and McMahon's two-pointer. Izzy now with three twos. Charlotte North setting the pace in that regard. The reason why we did not hear from the referees down on the field is that was an official review. It wasn't by any particular team. Team Apuzo, they did not waste an official review. This was just the referees choosing, making sure that their call was right on the field, and that is allowed as many times as they feel they need and or necessary. You've seen it all throughout this summer of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, facilitator-initiated challenges. That was not one of those. 
The facilitator for Team Marino is Renee Olson. Sam Apuzo's facilitator, Nicole Flores. Think helper, think advisor, support staff. Uh, on draft day, they'll be alternate and assistant GMs. We are past the midway mark of the third. Chance for us to take a break. Izzy McMahon's two has given Marino the lead by three. All team Marino in this third quarter in the quest for 20 points by winning the frame. They've got the three love advantage in the third and a 7-4 lead overall in the contest. Speaking of lacrosse, PLL play, Premier Lacrosse League action coming up from Utah next week. It's Atlas and Whip Snakes, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Water Dogs and Redwoods will follow. Saturday, Chaos and Archers, 3 Eastern, New Pacific, Cannons and Chrome. All four of those games taking uh, place exclusively on ESPN Plus. Water Dogs with the Attackmen, Sowers and McCardle packing a punch. We are in a 7-4 game right now. Taylor Marino's side has the lead. They've been doing well offensively, playing well on defense too. In fact, Courtney, with a Geico defensive play of the game. What you love to see is defense translating into offense. Trail check from Ali Kennedy, a push of a ground ball by Emma Trenchard, and then picking it up, Marie McCool. She was off to the races. This defensive play of the game, this Pico defensive play of the game, ultimately led to a goal, and that's the best kind of defense that you can have on the lacrosse field. Pretty exuberant celebration there for Marie McCool's tally. That made it 5-4. Izzy McMahon would follow with a two making the score 7-4. Before we resume play in the third, fans, it's time for you to earn your points for watching. If you're an Unlimited Club member, enter the code on the screen into your Athletes Unlimited app. You earn points, you move up the leaderboard to get the app. Download it today for free at your app store. Get access to great Athletes Unlimited content and experiences all season long. Doubling up on the sunscreen today, temperatures well into the 90s, and more than that, I am sure, on the field. This was a 10.30 a.m. Eastern time local start. The second game to follow Apuzo and Marino will be Team Johansson and Colson. That is set for a 1 p.m. start time, Eastern time on ESPNU. Emma Trencher sprinting through midfield. Leaves it in the capable cross there of Alyssa Perella. It's been a different season this summer for Alyssa Perella, 47 in gold. She has, uh, by my count, only four markers this summer. She had 26 last year. I believe she has a different role as we look at her this year. You know, she needs to do more of the work in the middle of the field as opposed to scoring goals. So many of these rookies are the ones who are challenging. They're new. People aren't quite knowing what to expect. So you remember, Perella was a rookie last summer coming out of Hofstra 2021. The question was, how would those second-year players, a year removed from playing every day and practicing every day with their collegiate teams, how would they uh, get back up to speed in summer number two of Athletes Unlimited? I'm sure Perella will be heard from before we are done. Gilbert, she's taken right off from her exciting season in the Chicagoland area with Northwestern. Shot clock's at 20, 7-4, 3 nothing. Marino in the third quarter alone looking for those 20 points. Alex Ost-Holman force-feeding Gilbert a spinning backhand that is smothered by Taylor Marino. Marino another six points, and yes, another double-figure save game she has 10 already today. Scotty Rose Growney comes to fetch as she wanders away from McCone. Marino began the day top spot in the leaderboard. The quest to be the Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse Champion as Taylor Cummings was one summer ago and it's Marino, the netminder who is lengthening her lead over Sam Apuza. McMahon thinking about a two again, hedged out there defensively by Wakefield. Turn it inside, bounce shot, score! Scotty Rose Growney. Continuing in the third quarter, Team Marino is just extending their lead. Different look than what we've seen in the past. Faking the two-pointer, Molly 
Steven seeing inside Scotty Rose Growney. I like how they're mixing it up. Two pointers, hard challenges, feeds inside, quick rolls. And this is where she got a step on her defensive player. That quick turn, getting her hands free and then sighting the cage. They're changing up where they're shooting as well, which is so very important. If you just shoot high, that's where the goalies are ready. They're waiting with their sticks up there. But having her stick high, snapping it low, Scotty Rose Growney putting goal number eight on the board. Courtney, while you're living on this side of the country, do you keep any pets? Yes. You do? Scotty Rose Growney just got a new puppy, an English black lab that's named Stevie Nicks. I love the name. I think we need to do another segment of all of the oh, animals, the trust dogs me. that these players have while they're in market. They're, it's like one big happy family. McMahon on the move. For Geyer's back. And then Stevens. Just a shade more than two minutes with which to work in the third. Kennedy with a spirited dodge from the wing. Stevens measured there by two time Team USA national team defender Cookie Carr. Switch it to McCool. 15 seconds to shoot. Inside there, Stevens on the roll. Five unanswered points for Team Marino. Team Marino has figured out this defensive set that Team Apuzo is in. We see as they shift and move, players are looking for where do they go in their space in the zone. And that opens up a lot of feeds inside. Obviously the defense is hoping to get a stick on any of those feeds, but they're way too accurate at this point. The handles are nice and soft for the attack of Team Marino. They're picking it apart at this point. And if I'm Sam Apuzo, I'm saying let's change up our defense. Let's go back to man and be on their hands. Don't give them space. Since we opened the door of this category, Molly Stevens' French Bulldog is named Milo. Somewhere Milo is barking for Molly. Second goal of the day, 9-4 for Team Marino in goal. Takeaway check from Sam Apuzo. Gilbert strides in, looking for the four on three fast break. Gilbert to the cage, she scores. Lauren Gilbert gets that one to squeak through Marino. Straight from the draw, Lauren Gilbert taking matters into her own hands. She's speedy, she's athletic, she's fast, but we see me Marie McCool coming up with the ball. Sam Apuzo with that check, the takeaway, that's good for 12 points, just as much as if she scored the goal. Fed that along to Lauren Gilbert. With a head full of steam, it's just too hard to stop her. She is too quick, I think, for any one player in the open field. Another multiple goal game for number three. Lauren Gilbert with multi goal games in seven of her nine in this her rookie season, continuing to lead the league in strikes. She was the heartbeat of the Northwestern offense, and boy, has she ever been good in this her rookie season. It's a, a 5 1 advantage in the third quarter for Team Marino. They're closing in on those 20 quarter points. Gilbert just a dozen seconds after the Stevens marker, making it 9-5. As Sam Apuzo jogs it ahead, she'll share the ball with Lindsey McComb. Apuzo suffering a loss yesterday morning, 9-8, the first time her teams have suffered a setback this summer. Sam was the last player to lose a game. Gilbert on the go, off the split, face dodge there, bouncer's broken up, and. Marino finds it at her feet. Time to clear for Emma Trenchard. Just over a minute to play in the third. We play four 10 minute stop time quarters in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. No set teams, fans will follow their favorite players. There's the weekly draft coming up tomorrow, the last draft of the season, 7 p.m. Eastern. You can see that on YouTube hosted by John Brickley. A pass back for Wakefield that'll chase her to the end line. Shot clock's turned off. You have 20 seconds to clear the midline in this league. On the clear, it's Arsenault. Dempsey, so smooth, fires and scores. The change of pace overpowering Marino. 
Once again, a defense coming up with the play. Stemmed on the defensive end of the field, a cause turnover by Cookie Carr. And watch this back and forth. She has Ali Kennedy on her heels. Dempsey Arsenault, graceful in her movements from side to side until she chose which direction to go. It was all her decision. And that's what you want to do as an attacker. Get your defender flipping their hips, not quite sure which way to force you. Dempsey Arsenal getting that second goal in a row for Team Apuzo. Likely not to be enough to eclipse Team Marino's five points in the third. Team Marino won the opening quarter. Apuzo turned the tables in the second frame. We are 9-6 down the stretch of the third. Draw control comes up for Marie McCool, who leads the league in that category right there with Ali Mastriani. Day after day, we are week after week. These are the final 20 ticks of the third. McCool attempting to run by Grace Griffin. McMahon will challenge McComb. 10 seconds left. Izzy McMahon backing away from pressure. Angles into the key, feeds. McCool, final seconds, one last ditch effort. That's snagged by Britt Reed at the final horn. Team Marino winning the third quarter by a 5-2 count. 20 points for all 14 players dressed in gold. They march off the sideline and into the fourth with you in a moment. They've been blazing the morning skies the past couple of days here at USA Lacrosse headquarters with Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse season two. Nine six after three quarters, Team Marino getting the win in that third frame by a 5-2 decision. As you see those points adding up on the leaderboard for everyone on both sides. Folks, tonight we have the Sunday night baseball matchup coming up, it's a real good one from an NL West perspective, Juan Soto and the Padres taking on Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers, wrapping up that big three-game set from Chavez Ravine. Seven Eastern, four Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Coverage beginning six Eastern, three Pacific on ESPN2 with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown, the expected pitching matchup, you Darvish against Tyler Anderson. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor with you as we prepare for the start of the fourth quarter. We are going into the game with Air National Guard. Compliments of Dempsey Arsenal. Let's go. Here we go. Great take, Grace. Yep, you're good. You're good. Yes. Watch your back. Watch your back. Yes. Good luck. Let's go. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Here we go. Good job. Dempsey Arsenault harmonizing with her teammates in song and with their lacrosse play. And it's always fun to watch uh, number 11 in the orange operate. It's a 9-6 advantage for Team Marino in gold. As we shout out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew for all their efforts this week. It's been a busy one. Challenged by some severe weather in the area and early, early morning starts. Thanks to our gang. Look forward to rounding out the season with you in great form next weekend. It'll be week four, the final weekend of Athletes Unlimited. Gets started Thursday late afternoon, 5.30 p.m. Ten minutes to go in regulation. Dempsey Arsenault and Sam Apuzo's squad attempting to come from behind. It's McCone back behind the goal. Lindsay watched carefully by Marie McCool. Apuzo, you said at court earlier today, she's almost positionless today. Part midfielder, part attacker. Beautiful moves there on the hesitation, had that one knocked down in front. Palermo comes up with a ground ball and will escape Apuzo on the ride with help from Emma Trencher. The fourth quarter just began. Sam Apuzo and her team 
it wouldn't be the first time that they've come back from being down in that fourth quarter. We've seen them do it before, except for last night. That was her very first loss of this season. So don't count out the team in orange just yet. There's still a lot of lacrosse to come in this fourth quarter. Izzy McMahon and her mates looking for insurance now on the three-point advantage. Two-person game, McMahon goes to the split, fires, and Reed took that one from the angle. Made the save, the ground ball collected by Caroline Wakefield. Britt Reed's up to nine stops. Six points for her for every rejection on the day. McCone will launch this ahead for Grace Griffin, the rookie out of Maryland. Three times a, a captain at the University of Maryland. The first player in Maryland history to ever be three times a captain. Grace Griffin, 12 in the orange. Marino doing her thing in a lot of different ways, stealing the ball there. Joe, that's worth 12 points, a cause turnover. The same as what a goal is. When she makes a save, she earns six points. That's like making two saves all in one. Cause turnover, great job, anticipation. She's active out of the goal cage. Surprised with how tight they were feeding that ball. She is going to be tough to catch with regard to the Geico leaderboard. She's had a blockbuster weekend. And it's not necessarily that she's been winning games. Look at Reed there at the top of the circle to stuff McCool. And down in a heap go defender and attacker. Two players in need of repair. McCool the first back to her feet. Slowly but surely Cookie Carr is up to her feet as well, readjusting the goggles. It's the second time today we have seen McCool run into the very sturdy Cookie Carr, and it's uh, Marie McCool getting a card here for a dangerous follow through. Kabonging Cookie Carr at the top of the head. We see at that angle the follow through, no question about it. Right into the head of Cookie Carr in the orange jersey. So this 60 second penalty. This yellow card is going to be big for the team in orange. They're gonna be able to have a player up opportunity on the field when they get the ball into their offensive end, a six v five, six on six. There's already a lot more space in Athletes Unlimited for the attackers to work with. Now they're gonna have one more attacker, one less defender. So they have a lot more ground to cover. And you see at the bottom of the screen for another 45 seconds, player up. Gilbert circling with Alex Oss Holman. Griffin. Shayna Pereka is a two point threat. Apuzo feeds Gilbert. Oss Holman finds Shayna Pereka. Down the alleyway once more for Griffin. Player up for another 25 seconds. Apuzo wants to change the formation here. Guarded by Trenchard. Jab step from Gilbert, not fooling the defender. Shayna Pereka throws it inside. That's picked off. Answered by Ali Kennedy. Good defensive play. Marino vaulting out of the goal circle to come up with the ground ball and make the clear to the midline. Wakefield there pushing and shoving with Watson. Sydney wanted a call against Caroline as the officials will huddle up. So Joe, I believe what they're speaking about, yes, that would have been back and forth, but there was a foul on Sydney Watson. Meanwhile, Sam Apuzo's team wants to get back to work after this midline collision. Caroline Wakefield lost the ball there with possession. Alex Ost Holman was there for the recovery. It's a 9-6 lead. We have not had any points put up on the board in the first four minutes of the fourth quarter. Apuzo and Marino battling now. It'll be Johansson and Colson. The second game of our doubleheader beginning at 1 Eastern on ESPNU. Halfway through the 60 second shot clock. Arsenal finds Apuzo for a slam dunk. And that should be the look that Team Apuzo is trying to do offensively over and over again. When either Sam Apuzo or Dempsey Arsenal has the ball, Emma Trenchard 
looks to leave one or the other. She's been matched up on Sam Apuzo. She's leaving her to head to Dempsey Arsenal to help in the double team, but you cannot leave a player like Sam Apuzo. She's such a threat around that goal circle. You wonder why each of them, Apuzo and Arsenal, when they're captains, they draft the other. It's because they have radar. They just have a radar with one another that is so well connected. Apuzo putting three points together in just uh, under six minutes worth of work, making this a very interesting two-point game down the stretch and another draw control for Sam Apuzo with five minutes and 53 seconds to go. Should this game be tied, we would require sudden victory over time. These two squads are battling for the 20 points that are available for the fourth quarter win. Team Marino has taken two of the three frames that led to this final 10. Arsenal a long way from the cage against Sidney Watson. Split dodge, thumped there right into awaiting Ali Kennedy. Both of those players need a second or two to collect their faculties. Ali Kennedy bouncing back up, jogging off. Watson with the initial cross check. Kennedy took the worst of it. Meanwhile, Arsenal set the eight meter key for a free position, one on one against Marino. Arsenal lets it fly, scores! She pings the upper corner. We said that there was a lot of time in this game, this fourth quarter, there's still five and a half minutes left. Dempsey Arsenal, Sam Apuzo, they have taken over. Dempsey Arsenal brought the score to 6-9. Then she had the assist on 7-9. Now a goal at 8-9, closed the gaps. The two of them, they were a part of Boston College coming to national prominence. They were not able to win a national championship during their time as players there but they are so very competitive. Do what it takes, working together, winning the draw controls. We see Sam Apuzo has been back at the draw circle. That's where she oftentimes gains possession for her team. And Dempsey Arsenal, Lauren Gilbert, two very fast, quick players looking to get the ball off the circle as well. Two quick goals, 36 seconds apart for Apuzo and Arsenal. This is a four point run for the team in orange, making it a one goal game and draw control for Apuzo, finding Gilbert with uh, just a bit more than five minutes to go in regulation. So much of the complexion of this game has changed. In the fourth quarter, team Apuzo has the two point lead in the quest for those 20 points. Shayna Pereka on the hop, spying on her is Kira Pelton. Pelton, who played collegiately at Stanford. Shayna's long drive was an easy save for Marino. The outlet's over the head of Little, but she'll take it in stride. Angled well there, cut off by Sam Apuzo. A great ride and cause turnover. Excellent job. Her effort, her intensity on the field. It seemed like Molly Little slowed up a little bit as she thought that ball was going to be in her stick. The halfway mark was just a step away, but Sam Apuzo, you cannot count her out. She rides so intensely. Her effort is always there 1,000%. Shayna Pereka has it with 25 seconds to shoot. Sam Apuzo against Palermo, the rookie. McCone is hiding back behind the cage. Lindsay McCone getting topside. Little is attached to her. Feed it inside, Griffin off of her back heel. Another save for Marino, shuffling over to her weak side. Taylor Marino with a dozen stops today. 3.50 left in regulation. Juggling the ball there, losing it out of the cross was uh, Pelton and back comes Dempsey Arsenal. As we have a timeout called, asked for by Team Apuzo. We'll take the break with them. Sam Apuzo and Dempsey Arsenal. As good as you will find with a thunder and lightning approach. Apuzo, point blank, no chance. Arsenal from the free position, upstairs. She played a lot of hockey. That looked like a hockey goal to me on ESPN.
We have seen a bunch of players creating well offensively today. This was an earlier goal due for an aspiration assist. Set up splendidly. This is a Puzo for Pereca to the back of the goal. Shayna Pereca, oftentimes shooting from downtown, getting those two points. But I do like her inside as a cutter, and they've recognized that on Team Apuzo, that she is deadly inside. Sam Apuzo with the aspiration assist of the game. Over 1,200 trees committed to this season thanks to Aspiration's support. Every helper, they're planting 10 of them for us. This game at the moment, a 9-8 advantage for Team Marino. Apuzo and Arsenal, A and A, give them an A-plus for their efforts again so far this summer. When you put the two of them together, good things will happen. When you have former teammates, whether it's collegiate or US, and they check off both of those boxes, you just know one another's game so well. Look at that, the number of goals, the number of assists, they just, um, they find one another on the field, even when you think that they aren't open. As far as sweeps are concerned, teams that have won all three, Team Apuzo is one and one. Team Marino is 0-2. Team Johansson is looking to try and sweep in the second game of the doubleheader today when they square off with Team Lizzie Colson. But when you do pack wins like that and quarter points like Apuzo does, you're going to find yourself very high on the leaderboard. Right now, she's chasing down the netminder who has been a brick wall once more, Taylor Marino. Marino, Number one on the leaderboard, and yet 0-2 overall for her team record. That's the way things can ebb and flow and change in a moment's notice on the Athletes Unlimited leaderboard. Taylor over 1,300 points now. Watching as Arsenault's mad run continues. Dempsey, Arsenault on the board again. Has her fourth goal of the day. Dempsey Arsenal feeling that one-on-one -on -one matchup right from the whistle. We see that they have cleared space for her. Nobody was ready to slide and help Marie McCool, number four in gold right there. Everybody thought she was going to go down the alleyway, so she actually came towards the help of the defense, but again, nobody slid. Dempsey just so fluid. I call her graceful because she just moves so effortlessly on the field. That little side-to-side -side split so very clean by Dempsey Arsenal. Everybody in orange, very, very happy, including the defender there, the injured defender, Kayla Wood, in the Power In My Voice t-shirt. 9-9, nine, nine. it's three unanswered in the fourth, five unanswered overall in the last nine minutes for the team dressed in orange. Team Apuzo trying to win the fourth quarter. Dempsey Arsenal, it was Team USA head coach Jenny Levy who made her playmaking skills akin to that of a basketball point guard. Dempsey so sure-handed with the ball and able to distribute well. She has uh, taken matters into her own hands, going to the goal for four today, and she has the ball right now against Marie McCool. Just over three minutes to go in regulation. If we remain tied, we'll go to sudden victory overtime. Shayna Pereka guarded by Pelton. Arsenal's had the rock a lot. Now she'll share it with her team captain. Sam Apuzo flips for Lauren Gilbert. Off the split dot, she fires, it scores! Lauren Gilbert gives Team Apuzo the lead. This is Team Apuzo's first lead since they scored the very first goal of the game. And surprise, surprise, that was also by Lauren Gilbert, wearing number three in orange. Sam Apuzo dishing this off. They're feeling their matchups. They're liking them. We see the reaction for Taylor Marino in goal. Upset that she didn't get that stick side high shot. But Lauren Gilbert, we see as soon as she wound that stick back that she pulled quickly, nice quick release. And that's a change from what she's been doing, but it looks like it hit right off of the stick of Taylor Marino as well. Courtney, it's the second time this summer that uh, Team Apuzo has made a mad dash rally from a 9-4 deficit. They've taken the 10-9 lead, a couple of goals in under a minute, six unanswered points on the board to take the 10-9 advantage. Remember, earlier, that was the game that was ultimately decided in the shootout. 
Sam Apuzo gets control of another draw. They have dominated in that regard. They are cruising to the fourth quarter win points, as you can see, for nothing. What matters after that would be the 45 points that come to everybody on the side for the overall victory. Team Apuzo, they're going to take their time, and rightly so. Get as much off of the shot clock as you can. So that way it's not going back into the hands of Team Marino sooner than what need be. But winning the draw control, that's what's proving effective for them as well. Apuzo, two-person game with Arsenal. Dempsey has it now at the eight-meter key. Working against Trencher. Behind the goal. Lindsay McCone on the hop will flip to Lauren Gilbert. Jab step against Palermo, skip it on through Arsenal. One more for Grace Griffin, shot clock's at six. Griffin trying to get underneath on Sydney Watson. Arsenal fires and scores! She ties the league record, although there is a call coming here. If it stands for Arsenal, it would tie the league record for most goals in a single game at five, if it stands. The officials showing a yellow card. Erica Leslie putting it back in her pocket. Dempsey Arsenal may be guilty of a dangerous follow through here. All eyes were just on the Jumbotron. They weren't quite sure. Team Apuzo was not looking for that. They didn't think that that was a dangerous follow through, but as everyone just saw, obvious that it went into the head of Marie McCool. And this six on five is how they can tie things up. A player up on the field, you've got to move the ball quickly, send some cutters, thread the needle on those passes. Geyer's back, looking for Stevens. 35 seconds to shoot, 35 seconds of player up. McMahon's been good again today. She's hovering outside the two-point arc. McCool will switch it for Stevens. McMahon looking over top of McComb. Shot clock's at 20. Geyer's back, skip it through. Rose Growney just missed the top corner. She had a really good look. Backed up on the end line, closest to the ball in the shot, where and when it leaves the field. Possession there, but now a, uh, a ruling from the officials. They're giving the ball to Team Apuzo. As we look at the top right, that follow through is what gave a player up opportunity to Team Marino, but they were not able to capitalize. So they had an illegal procedure on the field and the ball is going back into Team Apuzo's stick. They need to press out at this point. Team Apuzo just needs to play keep away. Spread the field, no need to go to goal. They lead 10-9. They have the lead in the fourth quarter points. They're about to get a boatload of leaderboard points for everybody on their side. If they can just run for cover another 14 seconds. Another one point game in Athletes Unlimited. So competitive, so close time after time. Shayna Pareka swings it on back towards the midline. Palermo and friends, not enough time. This one goes in the books. A brilliant come from behind win for Team Sam Apuzo by the final tally of 10-9. They get the quarter points worth 20. They get the game points worth 45. On and on, the celebration continues. Huge win for Team Apuzo, I think. For her, this was about pride. Yesterday being their very her first loss of Athletes Unlimited here in season two. So we saw her at the draw, we saw her causing turnovers and really just being the backbone of her team and allowing those teammates to do what they do best. Dempsey Arsenal with the one-on-ones to goal. In the last 12 minutes, Sam Apuzo's team outscores Taylor Marino's by a six nothing margin and they roll to a victory. Team Marino, a winless weekend at zero and three. Team Apuzo with a mark of two and one. A very happy netminder, Britt Reed, guarding the cage for Sam Apuzo's squad. Jogging off with the win. We'll put a bow on it in a moment. A jubilant bunch wearing orange. Team Sam Apuzo, you look at the score in the fourth quarter. A dramatic turnaround, the last six points of the game going to the team dressed in orange and then the other end of the emotional spectrum as shown by Izzy McMahon. Team Apuzo and Team Marino splitting the quarter points today, 40-40. But it's Team Apuzo who gets the 45 for winning the overall contest. Folks, you don't want to miss your chance to see the excitement of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. 
in person here at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. We're about uh, 20 miles north of Baltimore. Tickets are available today at auprosport.com slash tickets. MVP voting is uh, being conducted right now. One of those players I'm sure who will earn some recognition would be the captain, Sam Apuzo. Sam, this game changed dramatically in the second half. From your vantage point, what happened? Yeah, it, it, we kind of just brought, put it together. I think um, t uh, Moreno's team came out really, really fast and really hard. Um, and I think uh, second half, we kind of talked in the locker room, got a little adjusted a few things and just came out and kind of played, put everything on the field. It was our last game of the weekend. So kind of just left it all out there. And I think we were able to uh, come together as a group and it was really fun at the uh, that last quarter. <laughs> Sam, talk about the connection that you and Dempsey Arsenal have, not just on <laughs> Orange, right? Your team as captain, but throughout your entire collegiate and U.S. career. Yeah, um, Dempsey's my best friend. I love playing with her more than anything. So to be able to play with her this weekend and the, the first weekend was so much fun. Um, she's so much better to play with and against. Um, so being able to play with her at BC, at U.S., and kind of now here, um, I think our connection off the field shows on the field and someone I love playing with. Um, and someone I always look for. She always looks for me. It's, we have a really great connection. Sam, we're about to show some highlights of yours uh, throughout the game today. A 10-9 win, a come-from-behind victory. Uh, those tallies for you uh, coming in the second quarter and in the fourth. When you have the chance to shoot on Taylor Marino, what goes through your mind? Yeah, Taylor is such a great goalie. She's very difficult to um, play against and shoot against. Um, I think for me, I whenever I play against her, I just have to think simple. Uh, she's very good at holding her, her holding her position. So throwing all these fakes and doing too much, kind of, um, she's very good at stopping it. So I think being simple, just seeing the net around her. Um, but it is very difficult. She's such a good goalie. Sam, if you're to stay at the top as we six expect that you will one of the four captains for next week what's going to be your strategy going into the final week um yeah i think just simple and like i said it's what i've been doing the past three, four weeks is just playing simple playing together getting a group that is uh balanced has a lot of different threats um offensively defensively so if i am a captain i think i'm going to keep that same strategy uh, because i do think it's working for me and i think it's um creating a group that is really fun to play with. Sam, great work. Get out of the heat. Thank you. Sam Apuzo's team rallying for a victory over Team Marino. The young fans lining up for autographs and making friends with Lindsey McCone and all the great athletes, unlimited lacrosse players. There's Taylor Marino going through the uh, autograph line as well. Taylor, another double figure save performance. She was uh, valiant in defeat. For Courtney Martinez, Connor, for all the men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanks for your time. Second game of the doubleheader is going to start right here at 1 Eastern on ESPNU. We'll have Team Joe Hansen tangling with Team Colson. It was a tale of two halves, and in the second half, Team Apuzo and Lauren Gilbert reigned supreme.